Hello friends, Brandy here with Falcon Healing Arts. I hope you're doing really well. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to activate your divine masculine energy. I know that all of you are interested in holistic health. We're constantly talking about achieving wholeness, achieving balance. And so it's really important, especially with emotional and spiritual balance, but with the mental and physical as well, it's really important that we try to strike a balance between masculine and feminine. Just working with this is going to inform you so much in your life about where you could be showing up more, what things you can change to make your life more joyful, more meaningful. And it's especially important when you're dealing with something challenging, because as you're assessing where you are on this spectrum between masculine and feminine energy, you'll then be able to see where the imbalance is. Maybe you tend to stay on one side, and because of that imbalance, problems are showing up from this other side that are needing your attention. They need you to shift and change in order to address them in a healthy way. So in our last video, we talked about the importance of that, and I went into it in much more detail, talking about yin and yang and how we see balance in our lives, how we explain the dual nature of this world. So definitely look back on that video if you want more of a background to what we're talking about. But again, in this video, we're focusing on the masculine. We covered the feminine in that other video. Now it's the divine masculine. In the last video, I also talked about the problem that I had been seeing a lot with people, mainly women, because it's mainly women who watch these videos. Um, the problem I see with you being in the wounded feminine energy. And I want to do the same with this video. The problem that I see with you being in the wounded masculine and how you can shift to the divine masculine instead. And this is going to be triggering, I know, for many of us women. And before I get into this, I want to remind you that when we're talking about masculine and feminine energy, this exists in all people, regardless of your sex, gender, uh, roles in the family. However, in certain relationships, there is a tendency for us to fall into the masculine and feminine. So in a heterosexual relationship, especially when you are parents to kids, we tend to fall into one of these two roles. And that does create balance for our children. But there have been a lot of shifts in modern times. And really, this is what's going to trigger us women. <laughs> it was triggering to me too. I really had to come to terms with this is that it really was the feminism movement that brought this about that when we were seeking equal rights, a lot of us went to the other side and became actually more masculine in our energy to fight against the patriarchy, to fight against anyone who was trying to put boundaries to our potential. And I believe it's because of this that there is a reluctance to step into our divine masculine. Just the term masculine energy has a stigma around it. We associate it with toxic masculinity. And it's not helpful <laughs> because this has negatively flavored our attitude around strong men. It's made us expect less of our partners. And unfortunately, it leaves a lot of our children lacking for healthy male role models who tend to hold this masculine energy. So we'll get into more of that in a bit. I'll share my personal story around this, why I feel so strongly about it, because I was actually a victim of all of that. So it's important to remember this as we continue, that we are trying to step into our divine state, 
our divine state of both masculine and feminine energy. They are both valuable. They are both really important in our lives. And whenever we're saying that one is bad, that means we are in our wounded state. We need to be in the divine in order to experience more peace, love, and understanding. So how do you do this? Like I mentioned in the Divine Feminine Energy video, of course we need to assess where we are, where we are showing up energetically. And the best time to do this is when we are experiencing conflict, whenever we're experiencing a challenge. You can ask yourself, what is my part in this situation? How can I change my energy in order to create more peace? Because while it's true that we can't control much of what other people do, we can change the way we respond and we can change the way that we show up energetically with this response. It's what flavors the response and makes it appropriate. So I'm going to list off the characteristics of wounded masculine energy. And notice as I list these characteristics, if there's anything that triggers you, if there's anything that makes you go, oh, I guess I do that, or I did used to do that, I'm going to give you examples from my personal life about when I showed up in the wounded masculine, which I'll tell you right away was a lot. That was where I showed up mostly in my childhood years and as a teenager. But also, I will share a recent example about how I showed up in my divine masculine energy. Okay, so here is what you may experience when you're in the wounded masculine. You may be more aggressive. So that's just not with action, with physical fighting, but with your words. There may be aggression behind your intention, that you're actually trying to hurt people or make them feel bad to make them suffer. You may also be easily offended. And this is because we usually are more ego identified when we're in the wounded masculine state. So that means that we care more about how we're perceived in the world and we're not as aligned with our authentic nature. We may be more defensive when we feel that the ego is being judged and so we may become more defensive in order to protect the ego. And this may show up mainly as making a lot of excuses for your behavior. You may be overly competitive. Of course, a little bit <laughs> of competition is always good. It's very motivating. That is a healthy masculine energy. But being overly competitive, where you have to win or you're nothing, where it really reflects on your value in the world, that is not healthy. You're in the wounded state. Same with if you are success-driven, and just like competition, success is really good too. But if that is your main motivation, and it's because you're trying to make an impression on the world, that's where you may be more in the wounded state. You'll be more materialistic, so caring about the physical things that you have in your life, maybe more than the people or experiences. You may be more selfish, and you may be withdrawn, so it may feel like you can't share your heart with others. Maybe they don't deserve to see that part of you or to have access to those deeper parts of you. You may be stuck in your mind. We'll talk about this later, but being in your mind, your thoughts, this is more upward moving energy and it's more masculine energy. When you are in your wounded masculine, it may be really hard for you to ask for help. And a big one is that you are feeling spiritually disconnected. Now, when you are in your divine masculine, we flip it all on its head. There's still this young masculine energy, but you are encouraging. You are seeking relationship with others and you're trying to lift them up with you. Divine masculine energy protects and it guides. 
It's easy to feel inspired and then take action on that. When you're in your divine masculine, you communicate clearly. You take responsibility. Being responsible in the world has great value. You have an expanded vision, an ability to have a higher, wider, bigger perspective. You're doing work in the world that feels truly aligned with your heart. You have strong purpose in the world, and this feels like it's spiritually supported. You're honest, you're humble, you have strength, but again, it is uplifting. It's not at all oppressive. You're able to feel and express emotion, and all that you do is disciplined and driven. So again, as I foreshadowed with you, um, as a child, as a teenager, I was very much in my wounded masculine state. And it was just my mom, my single mom, my sister and I, my sister's just 13 months younger than me. We were very close. We were very close. Um, three women all in our wounded masculine energy. <laughs> So this was an overcorrection. It was an overcorrection because my father was no longer in the home. My mom had to have both roles. Again, it's stereotypical to talk about the mom as being the divine feminine energy and the father to be the divine masculine. But that is, in most cases, how it falls when you have heterosexual parents and a healthy relationship. So again, that was not the case. There was no relationship and we were all wounded. My mom was very strong, a very strong woman. And so my sister and I are too. But again, this strength showed up in a very unhealthy way. My sister and I used to fight all the time and as a teenager it actually got worse because hormones were involved um, yeah I was easily offended it was hard for people to correct me I got in a few fights at school yes me Brandy your spiritual teacher um, even I remember at a concert one time, a guy was too close to me and I stepped on his foot and I got really mad because he was too much in my space. And I felt I could get away with it because I was a woman. I remember feeling that way, about feeling powerful that way, and it was so wrong. So of course, this affected my relationships with men. And it took a long time to really see how I was the problem. The choices I was making were unhealthy because they were coming from this wounded state. It wasn't until I went through a lot of therapy, and we weren't really talking about divine masculine and feminine, but the problem <laughs> definitely showed up, and now I can articulate it in this way, which makes a lot more sense. So now to balance that out, let me share a recent experience of where I was in my divine masculine. This actually just happened this past weekend. I'll just tell you a little bit of the story because it was very emotional. But I was at the farmer's market. I was going up to a bank to get money from the ATM. And I saw that there was a man in the driveway out in the street actually he was partially in the street and he went like this he clutched his heart and fell like a tree to the floor and so automatically I it just happened I took charge I stepped into the divine masculine and I asked this guy at the ATM I said very clearly when you're done can you stop and help me this man over here collapsed I went over to the man I held him I made sure he was okay he was breathing he was conscious and then I asked someone else who came up to call 911 I was aware of everyone around me and we all had a role I was asking for help and I was taking the lead in the situation because I was the first one who saw him fall. But everyone had an equal role. In fact, the guy that I told to come and help me, he was just standing there and helping me. I was like, should we sit him up now? And the guy was like, yes. <laughs> and so 
I was able to do that. And when I was talking to the paramedic on the phone and the paramedic asked me what age this man was, I was like, I believe he's in his 60s. And I looked at the guy and he was like, yes, you're right. So he was like, he was my sidekick. But again, just because I was taking the lead in the situation did not diminish his role. He was helping me with this role. And we were all helping this man who collapsed in the street together. So, and then when the paramedics came, I was no longer needed. <laughs> they were in the lead and it was easy for me to back off. It was still very, very traumatic. Um, but it felt good that I was actually really clear and help the situation. Now, it would not have been good if I were bossy, if I was not asking for help, especially if I didn't know what to do. That wouldn't have helped anyone. So this is just one example. <laughs> I'm sure there's many others where I have activated my divine masculine in a very healthy way. And so I encourage you to do the same, the same thing I just did here with you. As you again look or listen to this list of the characteristics of the wounded masculine and then of the divine masculine, think of situations where you were in one or the other. And the more that you can see yourself being in the divine masculine, it will be so much easier to activate that when needed. Even in emergency situations like this, again, it just happened. I knew what to do. And even looking back on it now, I'm content with how everything turned out. Now, the second thing you can do to activate your divine masculine energy is to look for role models. So just like we talked about in the divine feminine, these don't have to be friends and family. In fact, it's probably good to look to people who are outside of your circles. This doesn't even need to be a person who's alive, <laughs> and it could be a man or a woman who embodies this divine masculine energy. So the divine masculine is a natural leader. So think of social or historical leaders or even archetypes, gods in mythology. They lead in a way that is compassionate and that makes everyone involved feel valuable. And their actions may even lead to huge, significant social change. So you can journal about this, have fun thinking of these role models you can bring into a meditation practice or just to keep in mind when you are triggered and feeling like you're in your wounded masculine. You can be like, what would so-and-so do in this situation? So on that note, because I know a lot of us say, what would Jesus do? <laughs> He is a divine masculine archetype. We get a lot of wisdom reading the gospel, whether or not you're a Christian. Even just steeping yourself in Christ consciousness is being in the divine masculine. And I'm bringing this up because typically when we are in our wounded masculine, like I mentioned before, we are typically spiritually disconnected. And it is in our nature as humans because we, we cannot explain our lives. And in order to make us feel secure in this world, we need to believe in some higher power. Whether you call it the universe, whether it's nature, um, or we simply call it the creator. We don't even need to define it. We just know that there was this bigger consciousness that created us, or even if we call it God. We need to have some devotion to something bigger than us in order to feel that our lives have value. When we don't do that, when we don't have anything that we value that's higher than us, we tend to instead devote our heart to authority figures or even institutions instead. We see people worshiping doctors, modern medicine, universities, politicians, 
and certain ideas and values instead. And this is not a healthy switch. It keeps us more in our physical state attached to ego. And what we need in order to be in our divine is to tap into our authentic nature, which is spiritually aligned. So just now, there may be a lot more room to heal. This is another area that took me a long time. Because my father was not present in my life, I had issues seeking help from the father above. And it's even hard for me to say that to because it does feel like a masculine energy that's above this higher power, and maybe you don't feel that it's masculine energy, but I feel that it is, and it was harder for me to connect into it because I was in such a wounded state for so long and had this unhealthy relationship to the person who was supposed to be <laughs> the divine masculine role in my life as a child. So that's a lot that you can journal about there. Now, the third way that you can activate your divine masculine energy, again, just like we did with the divine feminine video, you can use the elements of nature. So air and fire are the more yang masculine energies. They're both more ethereal, they're lighter, they're hotter, so not as tangible, and we consider this more yang. They're also related to power, so the third chakra at the solar plexus and the fourth chakra at the heart. This is where fire and air rest, respectively. And that may be a surprise to some of you that the heart chakra is related to more masculine energy. The masculine is emotional and it is expressive. So you could check out the videos I'll have linked in the description below to do rituals, practices that will help you relate to the air and fire elements and bring more of this divine masculine energy into your life. I hope this information helps you move forward in your life in a more balanced and healthy way. Please let me know if you have any questions. You could put those in the comments below. And remember that we could always work together one-on-one. -on -one. Um, this could be in person in my office here in Belmont, California, but I also do online sessions as well. So if you want to get more into how you can balance out both the masculine and feminine energy, or how to rise up from the wounded states of both, into the divine, this would be a wonderful focus for us. Before you go, remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, share it with a friend who could use the support, and remember to subscribe to this channel, hitting the notification bell along the way so you don't miss any of my future videos. Well wishes to you, friend. I will see you again soon.